So, I'm, I'm in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, and one of the things that I wanted to discuss was just the uh, diversity when you travel outside the West. Um, you can see this structure over here, uh, that's right across the street from a, a mosque. And I've been to India, so if you have been to India, you'll notice some similar designs. And this is in fact an Indian mosque. Um, if you look at the very top though, uh, you'll see something that resembles the f French uh, fleur, de fleur de lis. So you can probably sort of, you know, e extrapolate that at some point the French were in India or the, you know, somehow ended up being in a position where uh, they influenced the architecture. Um, well, the other thing you notice is just despite having such beautiful diversity, uh, just the fact that the, these major cities in Asia have not done a good job protecting their environment. So you see a lot of trash uh, right over here. Again, it's right, right in between two beautiful buildings. And the more you travel, the more you sort of um, <laughs> look at, you sort of become very unimpressed with the Europeans, you know, and the Tower of Pisa. Um, and, you know, just so much of what makes up that country, that continent, uh, simply because of, of not only the diversity that you see uh, within Asia, um, but also just the fact that there isn't, you know, very much segregation. Uh, to the extent that segregation exists, um, it is in, not based on race. It could be based on religion, but that's because of economic necessity. So you're going to have your little the little Indias. You'll have your little Chinatowns everywhere you go. Uh, maybe a little bit, a little Lebanon as well. But but what I when I say that the Asia, Asia does not suffer from a segregation problem, what I mean is that the more you travel, the more you realize how unusual it is to be in a country where uh, the majority majority of the people have white skin or black. If you look around, just in this one little area, uh, you've got dark brown, you've got tan, you've got, you know, a lot of, you know, just a lot of different colors, even within the same groups of people. And um, that is, again, uh, something that proves that the Muslim countries, for the most part, did not suffer from segregation on a, on a mass scale. Part of that is because of the, presumably, because, because of the lack of centralization wherever the you know this is in contrast to the catholic church which of course functions on centralization and so one of the reasons that cities in europe tend to look the same or anywhere the catholics went such as um even in the capital cities in mexico uh where the zocalo is uh you know the center of the town is because whether the french came when the french were diametrically opposed to the catholic church that's basically what caused the french revolution um, and, and what gave Napoleon so much popularity. Um, so ultimately, because you have centralization, uh, that is something that leads, in many cases, to segregation. Muslim countries and uh, you know, a lot of other countries uh, that were colonized, like India, for the most part, the capital cities or major cities that had natural resources were basically uh, governed on a centralized basis and so they they oftentimes look similar to European cities but because when they were colonized the colonizers did not were not able to colonize the entire country that's one of the reasons why Indian food is so different and so good is because you can if you only you know they're different from the north versus the south um, in part because you don't have that uh, broad-based colonization um, and which is, is synonymous in some cases uh, with, uh, you know, centralization, which then leads to, in many cases, segregation. And so I don't want to be accused of associating uh, whiteness and Christianity with segregation. So what I, will, I will also say that the reason that the Europeans were successful uh, under a centralized structure is because a centralized structure is often what leads to military victories. And so if you have that as your defining basis of success, at least in the old days, you can see how that would lead in many cases to um, a economic system that is based on centralization as well as segregation. Uh, you can see also why China uh, has less diversity in its food uh, as India, and that again goes back to centralization. And you can see that over, you know, 
basically over the last 150 years and 250 years, uh, the countries that had centralized systems, they tend to be, you know, they tend to be more successful, not because of that economic structure. In fact, it's harmful. Um, but if you think about it, it stems from power being consolidated within the military branch. And that goes all the way back in European history. That actually goes all the way back to, you know, the king. Uh, in many cases, you had a situation where, uh, you know, the king was a, or the prince was, you know, 12 years old or something. And ultimately that's because that person was simply a figurehead um, that was, and the military was always in charge. So when you think about that structure, you can also fast forward a thousand years later and you can see why politicians in the West uh, tend to be so deficient. Um, but you can also look at it in, in the sense that they're just sort of titular um, beings, so not people that actually have the power. And so when you travel, it's very really important to try to understand these things um, and also understand that everything you see comes from a logical place, comes from a place where that made sense at one time. Um, and in other words, you know, if you have, if you need foreign money, uh, then you don't, maybe you don't spend so much time on regulation. Uh, maybe you don't spend so much time on clean water. Uh, and ultimately that, you know, has, you know, long-term consequences. But in the short term, uh, if your currency is too low or if you have to pay off your debt that, that your government has taken on, sometimes by force, uh, the environment is not on your top five things to do uh, or to take care of. So, and I also don't want to say that Islam is synonymous with a lack of segregation uh, because you can see that, you know, one of the reasons the Muslims might have been more success, might have been successful in uh, Northern Africa and so on is, is because they too had segregation of gender. Uh, probably, you know, in the same way that a lot of Catholic schools have segregation uh, or all boys only schools and all girls schools because it tends to make people uh, focus. Uh, it tends to, to, tends to remove one area of distraction. So every system that has been successful has on some level seemingly embraced segregation. Now with gender, obviously that's a bit easier to remove, um, you know, than race. Uh, and of course the most difficult segreg segregation to remove uh, would be income and wealth. Uh, simply because you build a building, the person who owns the building, you know, that building is not going to go anywhere for a long time. Uh, so the ownership won't change. So these are all things that I think you should pay attention to uh, when you travel because a lot of European history can be summarized as Catholic consolidation, which then led to protests and the Protestant movement, uh, which unfortunately didn't seem to do much for racial integration or religious integration. And then you can compare that with the, with the Islamic world, which did not have uh, as much centralization. You know, in other words, there is no Holy See or Vatican uh, for the Muslims. You know, they're split off uh, in different branches, I mean, all of which are supposed to recognize each other. Uh, but there's, there's no interpretation that takes precedence over any other interpretation uh, based on a central and based on a central figure. In the same way that if a Jehovah's Witness does not have to listen to whatever a uh, Seventh-day Adventist uh, tells him or her about the Bible. So you notice, um, again, all these different sorts of scenarios. And ultimately what you also notice, or at least what I've noticed, is that the minorities within all these, within any country you go to, tend to be the most dynamic. And in India, that would be the Sikhs. Um, and that's because it's really interesting how successful they were in the private sector, uh, because they don't have very much political, political representation. And so that, of course, tells you why the private sector is so important if you're a minority or an immigrant, because that's the, that's the sector that tends to succeed, or at least should be successful, uh, by providing an ave another avenue to make money based on merit, uh, at, at least initially. So here we are, and, and the other I think thing that maybe you want to notice is just how many small business businesses exist, um, simply because you don't have a system um, where, you, you, first of all, you don't necessarily have a lot of, um, you know, shopping malls in these areas. It would be very difficult to come in and you know demolish these buildings, and nobody, I mean, people live here. So you, you know, in the West, uh, you have this idea of mixed zoning. Well, that's that seems to have been going on for quite some time all over the world where you have, you know, at the very top, uh, you've got housing and at the very bottom, you've got a uh, commercial center uh, or a commercial avenue. So you look at the, the idea of why small businesses and why decentralization 
creates a more vibrant culture, it's not only because the minorities tend to be more successful under a decentralized structure, it's not only because you have a situation where, um, uh, where you're in a position to provide more avenues, more different, different kinds of food, uh, just different ways of thinking uh, based, on, you know, based on different geographies that may have different rules and different customs that prevail because they are exempt from a central structure or a central government uh, and therefore have more avenues of access to income. Um, and so again, that's why even in India, you think, well, you have the Hindus who are vegetarian, but you also have the Jains who are even more vegetarian than the Hindus, so, um, or vegan, uh, and so on. So you look around and, and you see again that there are major differences in the way that history has played out. And what you also might want to think about is how, you know, centralization tends to create more order and more military success, but it doesn't necessarily create a society that anyone would, it doesn't create this kind of society that you might want to live in if what you value is originality and creativity. Um, and so these are all different things to be thinking about uh, when you travel. Um, and maybe, you know, you look, you look around and, and you might see something that you like, uh, and maybe you come up with your own different opinions, all of which would be uh, as valid as mine. Uh, but I think it was a good idea just to walk around when you travel and try to notice any sort of pattern that you might think is useful and then try to share that with, with other people.